Hi, I'm Mike Monticello, Editor-in-Chief of Business Solutions Magazine. Thanks for joining me today on this video blog. This is part two in a series of videos of me as an IT editor playing around with IP cameras. Um, if you saw my first video, I installed the software and um, got this network camera right here running. This is the Axis M1014. And today, I'm going to play around with this. This is a dome camera, and this is the Axis M1014. Like I said, it's a dome camera, and it looks like, as opposed to the other camera that I played around with in the first video, this is a power over ethernet. So this is something new that I've never played around with uh, that we're gonna get a chance to, to uh, experiment with here today. So I made this uh, kind of disclaimer in the first video. I'll make it again. Quick background, I have a little bit of a networking background, but I am by no means an expert. And when it comes to video cameras, I know next to nothing. So really, this is me showing you as an IT VAR how easy or difficult it is to set these things up. So hang on, we're gonna play around with this one right now and we'll see, see if we can get it going. So as with the previous camera we installed, we need to put some memory in this one and that's because um, rather than connect this to a DVR or any kind of video management system or video storage, the storage is actually on the camera. So we, I just put in a 32 gigabyte uh, micro SD card and uh, all the video is going to be recorded to that. Um, it's pretty easy to gain access to so we're just going to slap that on and uh, move on to the next step. Alright, so um, this is a view of my laptop. If you watched the last video you'll know that um, I had installed Axis Camera Companion software. This is software that is available for a free download on their site and uh, it installed within a matter of minutes on my computer and from here I'm able to access no pun intended, all the different cameras that are on my network. And right now you can see that I have one camera there. That's the camera that we installed last time and uh, nothing else. All right, well, I've got this network cable which is connected to the network, the same network that my laptop is plugged into. And I'm gonna plug it in here and see if anything happens. My guess is is that nothing will happen. Uh, just the limited knowledge that I have, this is power over ethernet. The previous model that we played around with had its own power supply. It actually had a you know a little, out, it plugged into an outlet. This thing, a little bit more advanced, gets its power through the ethernet cable. This is not connected to a powered switch, so we've got no sign of life on the camera itself. Let's look at the software and see if anything's happening. Back over here at the software, we'll hit refresh. And just as I thought, it did not find that camera. So now let's introduce a powered switch, which Axis was nice enough to send me. It's an Allied Telesis switch. I'm gonna plug that into uh, my network here and see what we get. I just plugged the ethernet cable into this port of this powered switch. Plug this in here, and then here's my camera that we'll plug in, and we will see what we get. We've got a, looks like a light there, so we're hoping that this thing turns on. Alright, there's a red light going. And it looks like the uh, camera unit inside the dome is actually turning around here. So looks like we've, we successfully have power to this camera. And I'm guessing at this point, if we go back to our camera companion software, hopefully we'll be able to discover this camera on our network now. And our light just changed green, so um, that's a pretty good sign. Let's see what we can get from camera companion. Back at Camera Companion, we'll go up here and we'll, we'll do Add More Cameras. And this is searching the network for a camera. It 
Not what I had hoped for. I loaded up Axis's IP Utility, which is a small program that comes on the installation CD. And this program, immediately when I ran it, recognized that the new camera is on um, the network, but looking at the IP address here, it has a um, 0 0.90 IP address, so it's not on the right uh, segment. What you just saw happen is um, I reassigned an IP address to get it on the right subnet. So now I gave it um, 61.230. So let's hit OK. Close this. We're going to close this, go back to our camera companion, and let's do add camera and see if it can find this camera now. Now that's interesting. It says upgrade camera at 61.230. So that's our new camera. This camera must be upgraded with the latest firmware. Okay, well, let's do it. Now um, we're being asked for a username and password. Okay, let's see, we did some quick internet research and said that root might be a good password to try. Boom, all right. So we will not save this right now. So here's our 5014 and we need to upgrade the firmware it said. So how the heck do we do that? All right, so I did some research and in in order to upgrade the firmware on the camera, like Camera Companion is asking me to. Um, I need to download camera management, which I did. Uh, I'm imagining as a professional you're going to have all these tools installed already. So I downloaded camera management software on Axis's site and let's see we have the M5014 upgrade firmware. So let's just click on this. The following devices are invalid and cannot be used. warnings, errors, I, so I don't know what a credential mismatch means. I know what that is. So here's, I'm guessing. I created a username and password for this site to manage these devices and the username and password that I created do not match the credentials for this device. So let me try the one that we tried earlier um, and see if this gives us access. All right, so that warning went away. Look at that, status okay. Now let's try to upgrade. Perfect, Up, so we're gonna browse. I had downloaded it here. There it is. Upgrade devices in sequence parallel. Upgrade, so it looks like you can set the time. We're just gonna hit okay. And magically, uh, we have some results here. The event upgrade was successful. So we'll just close that. Our firmware upgraded. I can't remember where it was before that, but I know it changed. Now let's go back to Camera Companion, and we will add more cameras again. And there it is. All right. Success. So we're going to hit Next. Do you want to continue? Yes. Ready to install. So I'm just skipping through a lot of this stuff here, but in the end, we should now have two cameras um, listed here. And we do. So now, interestingly, it says no storage, so I must have done something wrong when I installed the SD card, but it's good to know that, um, that I did that incorrectly. Um, now if I go over to live view, uh, this is the first camera which I put a piece of paper over because people were getting a little sketched out that I had a camera pointed at them. And then here's this camera right here, the pan tilt zoom. So uh, right now it's pointed at a board of all kinds of information, uh, but you get the idea. Now just for fun, let's go back to this screen. Um, this is something that I 
really skipped over earlier. Uh, if you saw the previous video, you know that I walked through almost every section of this. This is, um, if you look up in the address, this is actually like a web server that's running on the camera. So that's the IP address of the camera. And we're accessing um, just all these different settings on the camera. You can change the video resolution. Um, you know, as a professional, you'd be adjusting the color level, brightness, sharpness, all that. This is different though um, for this camera compared to the first one I played with where there's actually audio. So there must be a microphone on this camera. So I'm going to play around with it here. And yeah, you can see that it's picking up some audio um, on that little chart there. So that's kind of interesting. Um, and then of course this is pan, tilt, zoom. So um, this setting wasn't available on the other camera that we played with. Looks like I could probably go right or left and sure enough get the camera to do all kinds of things. So that's kind of neat. Um, and so on and so forth. If you're interested in seeing some of these screens in more detail, I'm not going to go through them here again. Uh, watch the first video where I um, really walk through almost every single one of these things and play around with it. Well, that was the Axis M5014. And I don't know what you think, but in general, I think that that print went pretty well. Um, sure, you know, it got the wrong IP address at the beginning, but I can't even blame the camera for that. Uh, I'm guessing that it's the way that I connected the uh, power over Ethernet switch onto our local network here in the office. Um, regardless, it was a pretty easy fix. It took a matter of really minutes to change that. And then also, yeah, we had to upgrade the firmware before we could get this thing rocking on the network. As far as I'm concerned, um, that's, a, that's a benefit. I mean, as someone who doesn't know what they're doing with these things, I'm happy to have to upgrade the software, be prompted to do so, to get the latest and greatest version of the software. So, happy to, happy to have to do that. So, you be the judge though. I mean, I, I think that that was pretty easy. So, what's next? Uh, we did a very basic model upgraded to a, a pan tilt zoom that requires power over ethernet. Axis sent me two other cameras here. Um, this 1314 is a network camera, more of a box camera. And um, I haven't even opened this yet to know what we're going to get into. But I think one thing that we're going to do differently on the next video is play around with uh, like video management software. And Next Level sent me this device it's a network appliance that can do it all. And um, I've seen it at shows and it looked pretty easy. I thought to myself, hey, if I were still a networking bar, this looks like something that I could probably get into and use with relative ease. So we're gonna put it to the test. We're gonna see just how easy it is. Um, and I should point out, they don't claim that it's easy or anything, but I'm gonna see how easy it is. So I hope that you find these videos valuable and interesting. Um, and if, if you do or don't, please give me some feedback, let me know. If there's something else that you want me to test or if you think I didn't do something right, uh, let me know. I'm happy to get the feedback and make these videos even better for you. So thanks for joining me. I look forward to talking to you again.